Hey everyone, and uh, welcome to this very impromptu uh, episode of Frozen Electronics. This is the first official Frozen Electronics video in Toronto, as you can see. Uh, I have actually recorded a lot of content that I haven't had the time to edit. I'm now in school full-time uh, at Seneca College doing my EE degree diploma at this point. I'm going to transfer to a degree program later on. So as you can imagine, it's very, very busy. Uh, I'm just doing homework all the time, but what I wanted to come on here and say is that I'm going to start doing some more content. I'm going to try and do some um, uh, more tutorial videos, which seem to be very uh, popular. Sorry, this light is like super freaking bright, but uh, without it, uh, you can't see me at all, so better to be too bright than too dark. I'm going to do some tutorial videos. Um, I have my I squared C tutorial almost complete. Uh, it's going to be me talking with a slideshow and then we're going to do some demos. It looks like it should be pretty good. Uh, I've been playing around with PIC microcontrollers more. Um, I've always been a Texas Instruments guy. I've used uh, MSP430, Stellaris, Kiva C, uh, all the TI lines, but I've always I've used PIC and Atmel to some degree as well. I started with Atmel quite a long time ago. Um, so I might do a, a couple of reviews on that because I find that PIC microcontrollers are just a little bit harder to get into uh, as an amateur. There's a lot of good tutorials and stuff out there, but especially now that they've switched everything to the new XC compilers, um, there's a few changes that came along with that. And uh, they don't have the family reference guide. Um, sorry for getting a little technical, but those of you who use PICs will know what I'm talking about. With the PIC-16 and the PIC-32s, there's something called the Family Reference Guide, which goes into very good detail about each section of the microcontroller, oscillator settings, A to D settings, uh, comparator settings, um, serial interface settings. So it's sort of a general overview of each one of those sections, how it works in theory, how to set it up, and then for more specific details, you go to your device's data sheet. Now, unfortunately, with the PIC-18 series, which is the ones that I've been using, I'd also use the PIC-32s, um, but I've been using the PIC 18s a little bit. They don't have one of those family reference guides, so it's all in the data sheet. This is good in one way in that it's all in one location, but I find that the amount of detail is not as good. So I might go into some details, just how to get a PIC 18 set up, because um, that alone can be confusing for people who have come from an Atmel or MSP 430, where um, the configuration bits are set up in a different way, whereas with the PIC, you actually embed it into your code. Um, speaking of PICs, I actually just got uh, an order from Dirty PCBs for the first time. I got these little um, PIC32 development boards. If I bring them close, it'll go out of the lighting. There's not much to see. Uh, it's really a development board for uh, those OV7670 cameras. You may have seen Mike's electric stuff uh, doing a uh, tutorial on them how to set up a little board to use them. I actually got the proto pack, so I got 10 of them uh, for 40 bucks Canadian delivered, if you can believe that. And they're very, very good quality. I've started to solder this one up a little bit. I'm waiting for the parts to come in. Um, I actually have a couple different orders I have to put in. Unfortunately, some places don't have stock and some of the parts I need, but I am very impressed with dirty PCBs. Um, I mean, they they feel just as good quality as Osh Park. And we're talking a fraction of the price. You get 10 of them for 40 bucks. And if you get the smaller ones, the 5x5, five five, it's even less than that. I had to get the 10x10 10 because 10 this is 10, semi, 10 centimeters by about 7 centimeters, something like that. Um, as you can see, I put some little proto <laughs> area on there. Hopefully the manufacturer wasn't too upset about having to do all those drill holes. Anyway, I highly, highly recommend dirty PCBs. I used to use uh, Osh Park. The more I thought about it, their prices seem a little high. I understand that PC manufacturing isn't cheap, but I am just some dude, and I'm in school, and uh, Dirty PCBs is now my go-to. The quality is excellent. Um, they took a little while to show up, but they were here within two or three weeks, which is pretty good. So that's about it. I just wanted to give you guys an update and say hi. Um, if you've been watching Dave Jones's uh, EEV blog, you'll notice he just did a, a video on EEV blog 2 talking about the new YouTube terms and conditions. Uh, so some people can opt in and pay a subscription fee per month and that will get rid of ads on your channel. 
I have a feeling this isn't going to be terribly popular. I think they're trying to compete with Patreon and Subbable, those type of things. Uh, if you didn't know, Subbable and Patreon are actually merging, so Subbable was bought by Patreon. But I think that most subscribers would rather support someone through Patreon, where their entire subscription fee goes to the content creator, instead of with the new YouTube thing. All you get is no ads, and only 55% of your money goes to the creator. Whereas if you help them on Patreon or formerly Subbable, uh, not only would 100% of the money go to them, you could get swag, uh, the content creators could give you advanced views of their videos. There was all sorts of other benefits. So I have a feeling it's not going to do all that well. Who knows? We'll have to see what happens. Um, as far as the light being way too bright, let me know how this looks, because I'm just using the webcam on my new laptop, and it seems like it's half decent quality. Uh, you can see up in the dark spots, it's a bit grainy. Um, so it's not perfect, but for me to just quickly throw up a talking head video like this. It's actually pretty easy. I know the audio isn't probably all that great either. Anyway, just wanted to say hi. Oh yeah, one last thing. Ooh, 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 ooh. I've had a hard time getting it off. You guys probably already recognize this. I got a pebble. I really, really like it. Um, extremely uh, tough. So far, I'm going to get uh, a different band. The bands that are on the Pebble are the standard sized watch bands. So you can go to any watchmaker or any uh, watch shop and get uh, replacement bands. You don't have to pay extra from them. I think it's only the Pebble Steel you can choose to pay the extra money and get a different band. Anyway, I might do a review on the Pebble at some point or a quick how to set it up video extremely easy to set up. You download the app on your uh, tablet or phone, turn on Bluetooth, it finds it, it connects to it, and bam, you can start downloading watch faces and apps. Now I'm having a heck of a time trying to get it back on my wrist. Anyway, um, the most useful thing, uh, unlike the Android Wear or the new Apple smartwatch, I don't want my watch to do very much. I want it to show me the time, of course, uh, and besides that, I basically wanted it to show me my texts when they come in, tell me if my phone's ringing and who's calling, because I use Bluetooth headphones. So I can actually answer with my Bluetooth headphones. But in order to see who's calling, I have to pull up my phone. So now with this, I can just look at my watch, see who's calling. I can actually answer it on my watch. It comes on my Bluetooth headphones, and away we go. So that's nice and easy. Um, and the other thing I wanted was for it to be able to show me the next uh, streetcar, subway, and bus times. Because here in Toronto, we have streetcars, buses, and subways. So there's actually an app on here. And I'll quickly give them a shout out. Oh yeah, it's called Faster Than Walking. Great title for a transit app. Um, it takes a minute to load. Your phone, of course, has to be connected to the internet. But then you can program in your favorite stops. So for example, on my way to school, um, the stop down the street here um, is the first one. I click it, it shows me when the next two streetcars come. Like, how awesome. That's exactly the sort of thing that a smartwatch is perfect for doing. Um, but other than that, there's not a lot else I wanted it to do besides the standard, you know, maybe a stopwatch and a timer. But I mean, I don't want to film video with it. I don't want to take pictures with it. I don't want to talk to it like the new Pebble. So I got one of the original Pebbles for 99 bucks. Uh, by the way, if you live in Canada, you're going to get screwed with A, you have to pay 25 bucks if you want it to show up in less than friggin' 10 weeks or something ridiculous, and B, the import fees. So by the time you pay for both of those things, plus the conversion to US dollars right now, I mean, it's quite a big increase in price. I don't want to say how much, because it'll change depending on uh, the Canadian versus US dollar, but it's almost worth it to just go to Best Buy. I believe here in Canada, Best Buy carries them. I didn't know that until after I had ordered mine directly from Pebble. Anyway, definitely worth checking out. Thanks to everyone who watches the channel. Um, as I become more and more educated, hopefully we'll have some more and more interesting videos. And uh, stay tuned, and some new stuff should be coming soon. I know I always say that. But this time I really mean it, because I actually have stuff filmed that I just need to edit. So thank you so much. Thanks for supporting the channel. Um, by the way, the website moved from frozenelectronics.com to frozenelectronics.ca, and maybe I'll tell that story sometime. But anyway, for now, everything's moved over there. It looks different. I'm going to be changing it 
back to a WordPress website. I actually have a backup of the old website, which I'm going to restore. So hopefully things should be back to normal soon enough. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you later. And now I have to try and find the stop recording button. There it is.